Mr. Investor Lot, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the biggest SPAC of the year. If this happens, it's going to be bigger than the Big Bang. Hey, uh, the Big Bang never happened. What? If you're new around here, welcome to the ranch, cowboys. My name is Miguel and we look for the biggest, juiciest growth stocks in the land. And I think this may be one to watch. If you're able to support my channel, just click the join button and join any tier. It really helps me to create good quality content. We also have a Discord group, so check the Patreon link down below and you can see the latest stocks that i'm looking at and working on okay cowboy with no further ado let's look into it baby so you have these two empty spacs at the moment you got ultima growth corp ticker symbol on the nasdaq agc and you got ultima growth 2 corp as you can see here, the ticker symbol New York Stock Exchange is AGCB. And one of these lucky SPACs is going to be merging with one of the biggest companies in Asia. I'll slow that down for you guys. They are going to be merging and this could be the biggest SPAC ever. Oh my god, they bleep my face. So right now, these are the rumors hot and fresh out the kitchen. Altima SPACs were surging on reported $40 billion deal for Singapore's ride-hailing company called Grab. Grab? What do you mean, Grab? Are you saying grab your horses? Grab your nuts? Oh, no, you got to protect those, baby. No, when I'm talking Grab, I'm talking about a super giant of a company in Asia. This company originally started as a ride-hailing company, but now they classify themselves as Southeast Asia's super app. Super local and super every day. So these guys cover a wide range of services. So you have Grab Transport and within this category alone, you can see they have a whole array of services. You can see just Grab here, Grab Share, Grab Hitch, you can hitch rides. You can even get private rides and luxury services or even just have a family ride. Rides for your furry friends. They've even got coaches and they've got disability assists. So it's like they thought of every single thing you could use a car for and they put it in categories like this. So when we're talking about eating up all the other other industries we're looking at food so you can get a meal from any restaurant they've even got grocery delivery here and they even have courier services so if you need to get your documents express delivered to you you can they're like the mailman and then these guys decided let's make our own way of running transactions and create a digital wallet so now you have a way to pay through grab grab pay they even have auto invest features super deals and reward points as well as fraud prevention and detection and they have partnered with stripe and oiden or is that aiden what is that? These guys even created their own MasterCard. You can grab tickets to the movies, you can book hotels, you can get reward points for anything. They even entered into subscription services and they also have insurance, as well as sending your family gifts. So when these guys say super app, they're not playing games. So where are they based? These guys are absolute giants in Southeast Asia and you can see here they're spread across most number of cities in Southeast Asia with a presence in over 500 cities and towns. This includes Myanmar, Philippines, Vietnam, Cambodia, Singapore, Malaysia. And some of you will be thinking what makes them different from Uber? So these guys had such a stronghold in Asia, Uber actually retreated and guess what they did? Uber acquired 27.5% stake in Grab in 2018 when Uber sold its business to its Southeast Asian counterpart in a a bid to focus on its core markets. As part of the deal, Grab has promised to go public by 2023 or it will pay Uber $2 billion. But the main reason why Uber decided to retreat from Asia was it was too competitive and Grab has already taken market share and they have enforced themselves and made them a stronghold in Asia. So when you look at big companies and how they eat and go into other industries like Amazon, like WeChat, these companies that want to become ingrained in a country's culture. For example, WeChat is a messaging company. It also does social media. You can order in restaurants, pay for services, and send money directly. When you see companies like Grab come and integrate themselves into these countries' culture in so many different markets and services, this could be an opportunity you don't want to miss. And now this is not financial advice, this is for entertainment only, but let's look at how much money they're making. So this is just Grab Taxi's holdings, as you can see from 2017 to 2019. And you can see here in 2018, the net revenue of Grab Taxi amounted to 1.1 billion US dollars alone. The figure is expected to reach 2.3 billion dollars in 2019 just that from taxi service it currently boasts 187 million users and apparently due to the c19 pandemic its revenue has jumped about 70 percent year on year in 2020 so now let's check out the stats of the growing markets they're in here with the taxi market we can see here this is the forecast from 2021 all the way to 2026 and uber is there ola grab 
big boy player. So in 2020, the taxi market was valued at 159 billion US dollars. Now this is expected to rise and reach 327.5 billion by 2026, with a compounded annual growth rate of almost 9% during that period. And according to Mordor Intelligence, Mordor, they state that the fastest growing market is in Asia Pacific. And in this region is exactly the region in which Uber decided, you know what, let's retreat out of this place. Let's buy some shares in our competitor because they've already taken the market here. Next, we can see here there's online food delivery. So as we know, Grab offers not only food delivery from restaurants, but grocery delivery. And we can see by 2024, they're predicting $182 billion in total revenue for that market. The largest slice of the market, the largest segment is platform to consumer delivery with a projected market volume of $79.6 billion in 2021. They are also estimating that the most revenue will be generated in China. Yet again, Southeast Asia. Digital payments and digital wallets. So this website consults Consultancy UK is stating that they believe that last year digital payments soared worldwide to surpass 700 billion, adding up to nearly 100 digital transactions on average in a year for each person on earth. And on the top left, Asia Pacific leads the global non-cash transactions growth and it's driven by the soaring internet economy. You can see the biggest segment in 2019, 243.6 billion transactions. And with Grab also covering the insurance market, the insurance market is expected to reach over 6.9 trillion yes trillion dollars it actually went down in 2020 and it was falling to about 5.8 trillion us dollars but by 2023 we're going to be seeing you know almost 7 trillion if we're also looking at their courier services here let's take a look at the global market now this could grow at a compounded annual growth rate of 11 percent between 2021 and 2023 and this could reach 722 billion dollars yet again asia pacific was the largest region in global couriers and messenger markets accounting for 35 percent of the market in 20 so now Grab's revenues have jumped 70% year on year in 2020. They have over 187 million users. With all these different markets that they've gone into, if they get a little piece of the slice every single place, just imagine how much revenue they can make. They also offer greatest flexibility for users. They've got a pay later option and they've actually built out their merchants network to consist of over 600,000 merchants now. And now these guys are attempting to come public either via SPAC with Ultima or they could decide to IPO on their own. So this is currently the institutions that back them. So you've got investment groups like SoftBank Capital, Toyota, and you even have Hyundai in there. So I think this is back from 2018 or 2019. They valued it grab at about $14 billion then, and now it's gone up quite a bit. And they said that the revenue that time was about $1 billion a year in 2018. And if we look at all of these active users as well, they said that there was about 400,000 active users in 2014. And this is crazy. Since that point, there's been millions and millions of downloads, 30 million downloads, 100 million downloads. And and since then, you've seen loads of downloads, loads of user base. We've grown all the way up to 187 million. The number of drivers they've amassed as well, you can see here, was only 50,000 drivers in 2014. And the last reported on this graph was about 7.1 million. You can see their growth year after year as they expanded to different active cities. So will they continue to grow? One thing I like to look at is a company's careers page to see if they're hiring. Because oh boy, if they spend their money on growing even more, we can see here there are hundreds and hundreds of positions from engineers to graduate schemes to Digibank. You've got user face design, product, data science. There's so many positions opening up in sales and operations as well. We can see here loads of account managers all across the world. Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia. These guys are aggressively pursuing Asia for growth. And that's where a lot of the money is in these markets. So now we've got a lot of different news outlets talking about it. We've got a Bloomberg saying they're in advanced talks to merge with Altima's first spec, AGC, but perhaps they could also merge with the second spec or it could fall through. But if this does go through, it's reported to be a 40 billion dollar deal. That is what the potential value would be between Altima and Grab. This would be the largest spec deal on record and Grab would raise between 3 billion to 4 billion dollars in proceeds from that potential deal. So in terms of what's in the pipeline, what can we expect from Grab in 2021? They they have publicly stated that they expect to break even in food delivery by the end of 2021. They've also onboarded and managed nearly 600,000 new merchants across Southeast Asia. However, according to credit ratings agency Moody's Research, they have stated that Grab's EBITDA is unlikely to break even before 2023 as growth plans for its financial services business will temper overall profitability in the next two to three years. They were, however, awarded by the Monetary Authority of Singapore a full digital bank license. And they actually want to focus 
focus for 2021 on onboarding more than 70 million small and medium-sized enterprises. They account for over 99% of businesses in Southeast Asia, which are key to the region's economic recovery. So by giving these small businesses the tools that they need to grow and to innovate, they hope that no one gets left behind in a digital first world and they think they'll continue to be able to support them and create more money and revenue from these vendors. So with that being said, will I be buying Southeast Asia's super app? I think I will be making a position in this company because I can see what they've done in terms of the culture, the way that they've integrated and they've taken up market share and I've seen Uber retreat. But that being said, I need to know figures, man. I want to know why they're raising so much money, what they're planning on in the pipeline, where they're going to expand to next, what's next for them to infiltrate as a super app. I want to know how much their debt load is and how much the revenues are going to be. So I'm going to try and make a small position in this company and I'm going to see when the revenues come through. I want to see the exact figures and then I might load up a little bit more. Plus, nothing is definitive yet. These could just literally drop out of the sky because if I was to buy one of these now and then Grab decides to IPO on their own without coming through a SPAC, I'm going to get left with this blank check company, baby. So guys, let me know what you think about this company and if it interests you seeing this kind of company, a super app expanding across Asia and tell me if you'll be making a position in it, if you know about it and also if you've used any other apps like WeChat before because when I see apps that actually integrate and go into different kinds of marketplaces, it really interests me. What if in the future these guys actually partner with somebody like Tesla to actually run robo taxis within Asia? We never know, man. What if Tesla goes in and just disrupts them and puts in the robo taxis and undercuts the price? Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Tell me if you like content like this, if you'd like to see these new kinds of companies and spac attacks popping up. If you're able to support my channel, just click the join button. It's only 99 cents. You can join any tier. And if you want to join my Patreon and see what I'm buying, what I'm selling, what I'm currently researching and looking at, join any membership level. I'll let you into the Discord, baby. But if you're unable to join memberships or the Patreon, just you hitting like and clicking subscribe on this video means the world to me. Thank you so much much for watching mr investalot over and out baby